We have already like three clubs that are gonna be closed from the top tier list, uh, top 10 tier list, and we're only at number six. Hello and welcome to another video on this channel, another reaction video from me, Maki Solomon, your host. First of all, thank you for all the positive feedback on the last video and on all videos in general. Thank you for commenting and liking and sharing. So yeah, today we're gonna react to the top 10 best clubs in Berlin and I'm gonna tell my opinion if it's true or not. I will just give my brief opinion as a, as a newbie. So let's dive uh, straight into it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment it and uh, activate the notification button and stuff. That being said, let's dive straight into it. Here we have top 10 best clubs in Berlin. Best clubs in Berlin. Exclusive circle is the channel. Uh, posted one year ago. We leave a like right away just to honor them or just to push them and let's dive into it one of the main reasons many tourists go to berlin is to check out the city's club scene it has more kinds of people than almost any other city in the world from the world famous bergain to the many underground clubs berlin has a Bergen. exactly the right club for every taste and every mood you aren't familiar with Ber this b-roll is so not berlin berlin's club scene are you no problem. In the overview, we show you the ones we like best. Berlin is a city that is always busy. At least on the weekends, many clubs in the capital can make this saying come true. Some of the most popular clubs in the city opened their doors on Friday and closed them early Monday morning. How yeah, this, this used to be. There's, I think, only one club who still does it which still does it, I think it's Sisyphus, but the rest uh, are not doing it anymore. Only like for really special occasions, but back in the day this was the status quo. Opening Friday and closing on Monday. However, before we begin our countdown, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our... Yeah, yeah. Number 10. So please subscribe and like them if you like the video, so... Obviously. Watergate. Watergate, which is right on the banks of the Spree, is without a doubt one of the best clubs in Berlin. Inside, there are two floors where people dance and party to techno, electro, and house music. I mean, I mean, he says one of the best clubs. I wouldn't say it's one of the best clubs if you say top 10 best clubs, okay. But I think, yeah, it's so funny that Berlin has like 10 best clubs, uh, probably better than most of uh, compared to other cities. But I wouldn't say that, for example, like Watergate is one of the best clubs. If, we, if you do it like in a top 10 list, okay. Yes, probably will make the cut, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like really super recommend uh, Watergate. But I have to say it's a nice club though. It's one of my first clubs. I always been uh, in my bartending days. I used to after there. So if I ended my shift at four, I would go there and party there till 10 a.m. Then have a rest and go work as bartender again at five. So always have a little bit of sentiment to Watergate and this ground floor is obviously one of the most beautiful in Berlin because you have like a huge, like a nice panoramic panoramic view of the Spree and looks like the river here in Berlin and it looks just amazing. But yeah, I don't know, for example, like the first floor, like the second floor, I don't know, the acoustic I don't really dig, but on the ground floor always like there was always playing like some good minimal, I don't know, minimal house, minimal techno stuff, always lighted, the lighting is nice. It's more, this, this club actually is one of the most not Berlin-esque clubs in Berlin. It's, it feels really more like Ibiza or kind of Mykonos because it's like also like people with white collar there, like some corporate people there. It's like a mixture. It feels more adult and not like... Uh, uh, techno, techno, rave, 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 yeah. So it's a different vibe to the other clubs that I think that gonna be followed here. The water terrace right next to it on the banks of the Spree is a great place to take a break in between. The stylish and modern place also has a lot of leather seating groups where you can relax. When you're not working up a sweat on the dance floor, you can look out the floor to ceiling windows and see a unique view of the Spree. Number nine. Kit. <laughs> this also sounds like a fucking AI generated uh, ad video, but yeah, okay. Number nine, Kit Kat Club. Cat Club. Kit Kat Club has been an important part of Berlin's club scene for more than 20 years. Before your first visit, you should already know what to expect here. The famous fetish club is more than just a disco. Every weekend, 
People of all ages and sexual orientations go there because it has a seedy, lascivious, and sexual atmosphere. The club has a love swing, a pool, and a gynecologist's chair inside. The Who didn't hear about the gynecologist's chair? So, Kit Kat Club, I think, is really like one of the best clubs in Berlin, and is the club that I like the least because i'm not i don't really like sex positive parties to be honest you know and the thing is kitkat has a really nice community i would say you know the people are very gentle it's really cool to be there they're colorful they're open really nice but something is not right for me i like to party just to party and uh, you know like sexual intercourse and stuff i'm not conservative it doesn't bother me but it also doesn't add at me something so that's why I'm rarely there obviously I've been there a lot of times so I can say it but I have to say they have a good community and it's nice to be there you know even as an alien kind of or as a as a as an outsider but one thing that you can really say and that's the objective truth is that the music there is shit they don't just have not good bookings and that's like the also personal my biggest problem is it feels like more like a techno swinger club rather than a techno club like a techno club where it's about the music and uh, yeah about dancing it's just like more people that want to mate there and that's not my vibes i don't want to mate i just want to party i just want to socialize and blah, blah blah and then like oftentimes it feels like a bit weird there for me I don't know, maybe it's like my special sexuality thing, I don't know. Maybe I'm not like uh, as sexual as the people around me or there, but that's me. So definitely wouldn't recommend if you're not like super, uh, you know, want to see something crazy and whatever. Maybe most of the people that are like new to Berlin or like coming as tourists, they would just want to see it because it like has such a such an image, yeah, such an image just to want to see it, just an, as an attraction. But this I also don't like, you know, if you're coming to a club like this just for attraction, just to see, wow, I want to see crazy shit, you know, like a fucking swing or like the genealogist chair and stuff it's also like the wrong reason to be there right but yeah for me it's a big no but it's definitely one of the best clubs in berlin i would say for the community and for the freedom purposes of your sexual sexual orientation and stuff that you can live out there freely and i would say most of the time without any problems without harassment and stuff because the people tend to be like very polite there there are also striptease poles leather sofas and beds Classic. and a gynecologist's chair on the four twice. dance floors, the dress code, which is meant to be loose, is also sometimes dropped. Cell phones and cameras are not allowed in the club at all. You have to turn them yeah, in. This is also a nice thing. It's the only club where they take away your phone which is crazy because to have like this trust level to give somebody your phone but this is also something really nice where you can like be more present at the party this this is actually like a detail that i really like i forgot about it but like if you like giving away your phone party feels just so much cooler i try to not to hang on my phone in parties obviously but uh, you know sometimes you get a message and you answer it and blah blah, blah and you say and you yeah get pulled away of the party basically by our modern technology so here you don't have it you don't also don't have any clock so you have to really find people with a wristwatch or something that you can ask uh, what time it is no daylight so you have no suggestions so you can really get lost there and like uh, yeah party there with any problems so that that's why I would still say that KitKat is one of the best clubs and I'm pretty sad to hear that they put it onto, onto an 8 in at the check room number 8 Prince Charles the Prince Charles doesn't want to fit into any of the typical types of Berlin clubs. It's neither a hip-hop club nor a techno stronghold, but it has elements of both. Employees of the company that used to be there used to have their own swimming pool, but now people party all night. The Prince Charles in the Kreuzberg neighborhood is very popular because it can be used for many different things. The Prince Charles is a good place for fans of many different kinds of music. There are hip-hop parties with rap and black music and nights with electronic dance music. There are also small concerts by artists from all over the world in readings. If you ever need a break from dancing and partying, the club's courtyard is a great place to go. Yeah, putting it at six is just a cap to me, you know, it's not even on the tier list. Yes, it's versatile. Yes, it's cool. Also, yeah, it's, it has some very interesting in design and stuff. It's cool. Yes, obviously. It's a good club, but uh, it shouldn't be on the list, to be honest. About Blank. About blank yeah. Not too far from the Ostkruz S-Bahn station is Blank, 
What used to be an illegal club is now part of Berlin's legal club scene. So about Blank is basically also like a big heritage from Berlin, I would say, in terms of socialism. They're super socialist, it's like basically an anti-far left-wing club, you know, and if you if you really come at the doors and have like more than 520 euros on your, on your in your pocket, they will like look strange at you by checking you and like blah blah blah, you know, you get some negative comments. So if you like trying to be posh or look posh and going there, this can be definitely for them kind of a red flag. I wouldn't say that she won't let you in, but there will be definitely some weird comments about it. Had it on multiple occasions there. Yeah, that's what I like about Blank. I'm not a super socialist. Yeah, and I also don't like this whole Antifa movement, to be honest. I may, I wouldn't say I don't like it and like it, but you know, it's like... It's just not my movement, let's put it like this. But there's the club there and actually also has some really nice floors. I think they have like three floors, two inside floors and one tenth floor or something, which is super nice. But like this club never made it for me, but definitely it's one of the OG clubs here. Untouchable. Definitely have to has to be on the list. As a club that came out of the left... And sadly it's gonna be uh, torn down because there is like a new project in berlin that there is going to be a highway so they will tear this uh, location down to gentrify the city basically to build a highway a lot of clubs are are affected by this this scene about blank is still run by a group of people what is this photo man this quality is just giving me from the autonomous cancer. squatter scene still you can have a party here without too much trouble the people who made it want to make it clear that it is not a political group, but a techno club where people of all kinds can dance and have fun. I think they're super political. I don't know what they say, but like really in this club, you really feel politics. Number six, Wild Rin. So next, next one who is gonna, tear, gonna be torn down or closed is Wilde Renate. So they announced like last week or two weeks ago like that they're gonna close Wilde Renate because like the landlord uh, doubled the rent over a month or something. So yeah, this is also one club that is going to die out basically. So we have already two clubs. Ah, Watergate as well. Oh my god, Watergate has the same owner. So Watergate is uh, closing down. So we have already like three clubs that are gonna be closed from the top tier list, uh, top 10 tier list. And we're only at number six. So we have like a 50% or 60% closing rate for now. The Wild Renat should be on every list of Berlin's best clubs. From the outside, it looks like an apartment building in the middle of Friedrichshain. On the inside, it has all the charm of a wild DDG party. The club reminds me a lot of Berlin in the early 1990s, when the first clubs were mostly illegal parties in old, rundown buildings and industrial ruins. True. From the improvised interior, which has this 90s charm, there are several dance floors on different floors. Most of the music will be electro, techno, and house. But the club has a much bigger range of activities. There are also concerts and theme nights like breakdance battles and street art nights. Break you can take a break in the inner courtyard. Number 5 so go back to uh, Wilde Renate. So I have to admit that I first time I visited was three weeks ago. So we had like a showcase there with our DJ collective John Fick, Aton, and his brother. So it was uh, amazing, and it was first time there, and I didn't know that it's such a nice place because I always like ah I don't know Wilde Renate, blah blah blah. But this club is just perfect. I just love it. It has definitely a really colorful vibe nice people there so basically what he basically a bit mentioned is it is really like a imagine like a building like a east german building pretty ugly five floors or whatever yeah five levels of floors whatever you call it and in each floor you can just go up like three floors up three floors down whatever and go right and left and you're basically going through a whole building and there's like uh, rooms like small rooms like this room where you just hang out like a DJ uh, DJ desk and whatever like a small dance floor you know a toilet and it just feels like you're wandering through a living space like a asylum basically if you if there is asylums and buildings but yeah so it really feels so colorful and so good it's also like a cultural institution if they like do besides techno parties if they do like breakdance battles and concerts so it just adds some more depth to this whole concept which is super nice Wilde Renate is a Clear recommend, and I think being number six is basically it's, it's a good street art night. Good place for it. You can take a break in the inner courtyard. Number five, Magdalena. Magdalena. Magdalena, who is just as wild as Renat, is right next door. She wants to party, dance, and rave with you. Already, 
People know that old power plants are great places for raves. So Magdalena has also found a place to live in the old harbor power plant in Friedrich Shane's Osthofen. The interior is very simple. Okay, so I think this club is not called Magdalena anymore, it's called Club Ost. I don't know, never been there. The audience seems to be pretty young and new, new age ravers. So that's the only thing that I can say. There's also like some pretty hardcore sex parties uh, being held there. So it's not a match for me. Which makes it feel very But it's definitely one of the popular, more popular clubs in Berlin. Different from the colorful Renat on the other side of the street. Even though the DJs play a lot of techno, they still get a lot of nightlife friends every weekend. As long as you can get through the hard door, you can hear the bass here all night long. Number 4. Ritter Butske. No. No. No way. This is number 4. This is, this is like peak sellout techno club or whatever you name it. It's basically the worst club in Berlin. I would say Ritter Butske is the worst club in Berlin. Catch me outside. Or just, I don't know, hate me if you want to. Ritter Butzke is mad shit. Hate it. It's like the gen most gentrified like techno experience you can have. Period. Ritter Butzke is still one of the best clubs in town. Even though it no didn't way. make our top three. In the old factory halls of the Butzke work on Ritterstrasse, people from all over the world come together every weekend to turn night into day. You can... They do it in every club in Berlin. Find techno and other kinds of electronic music in different rooms on different floors. People who go to the club often say how much they like the carefully chosen lineup and the friendly service. There are also poetry slams, furnissages, or public viewings, as well as yeah. This is, you you can say that that they have like a broader spectrum. There's just being a club, and this they did, and that they doing good. But the club. No way, man. If you say my favorite club is Ritter Butzke, I would say, man, don't talk to me. Wild parties that go on until the wee hours of the morning. Number three, Bergen. Cap. It's obviously the number one. Obviously the number one, and I, I, I'm just really curious what he, what he will say is number one. If his number one is Sisyphus, okay, I get the, I get the vibe that he's uh, trying to portray here, but definitely Sisyphus is the number three, and Bergen is the number one. In the techno world. The Berlin Street Am Reisinger Bahnhof is well known. It is close to the raw site and has a name. I think this is basically Bergheim, right? God, can't be. It, it looks pretty simple. Known I don't know. I don't know what that stuff here is. But around the world, pillars. Here is the Bergheim in Friedrichshain, which is famous for its Panorama Bar. Its reputation goes way back. Like he's talking about Panorama Bar, which is like a bar above, like, and you have like a panoramic view of Berlin, and he's showing a basement. <laughs> People outside of Berlin know yeah. about the myth okay, of the yeah, Techno that's Temple. Kind of, but that, that, that's the hall, just where, like, I think Lady Gaga did her release parties and stuff. Especially the stories about what goes on on and off the dance floor there. At the end of the day, you can also just go to Bergen to party to strong techno beats. To do this, Strongs. you have to get through what is probably Berlin's hardest door. Yeah. And that's also the main reason why Bergen is in number one on our list. When everyone wants to go to Bergen, waiting in line for hours only to be turned away at the door can quickly kill your desire to party. Number two. K yes, that's true. But you know, Bergen has like a hype over the last few years last decade so they have to be like uh, do a strict uh, selection obviously it's not really easy to get in there but if you get in there it's the best club you know and the other clubs also not profit a not not profiting from you know letting everybody in you know i don't know clubs that like le let everybody in there's always a selection and if you basically i would say berlin is like video game okay berlin techno club or electronic clubs yeah it's just like a video game okay if you're let's say not cool enough yet to get into Berkheim, you will get rejected obviously right so if you're not like an artist or like a mature person they obviously will reject you anyway okay but if you're like new to the scene basically new to the partying scene or whatever you need to level up before you get to understand what Berkheim is about that's my perspective on it okay so first of all you go to clubs like Kata Blau here number two Sisyphus Watergate and blah get to know the vibes you know that they're like super open you know peace love and harmony and that stuff you know and also like the whole let's say drug situation you know that doesn't like you know catch your soul 
off guard what you see in background, so, you know? So it's nothing too special what you're gonna see there, you know, and the sex and whatever. So basically you need to go through uh, different stations in Berlin to end up at Berkheim, that's my personal opinion. Or other otherwise there is an alternative version how you can do it, just be, being, let's say, an art creator, an artist or whatever. Usually they get easy there because I think like Berkheim is the really arty space for artists and that's why a lot of, it pulls like a lot of artists and creative people, you know. The others are more for like for partying and for normal people, let's say, but Berkheim is super artsy in my eyes, you know. And obviously there are a lot of people that are not artists and whatever, but still, you know, if you're not from these uh, spheres, you have to a bit like level up. Cater Blau. Cater Blau is one of those places that is an important part of the nightlife of the city. What started out as the still famous Bar 25 with a few wooden huts. Yeah, so Cater Blau is obviously an OG. Not obviously, but as you say, Bar 25 is like from the 90s. It's an OG and Cater Blau, I think, really deserve number two, to be fair, because they're not also, they're not only a club. They have like this huge location there with studios, they have like a flea market there, they have like a Christmas market there, or like just a food market, like they have the club obviously there, they have like a theater hall there where there are drag performances or poetry slams and anything happens there. So they have like a huge added value to the techno culture in Berlin. Obviously it's more hippie, it's not like uh, this Berghain leather chains gay stuff, it's just more happy, woodstocky, super nice. Katablau deserved it, even though I don't like to go there. Personally. I don't like to go to the club, but I love the flea market, the, the, the Christmas market and stuff, the food and stuff. It's uh, right on the spree, as he said. It's just beautiful, man. And a disco ball is now a professional club landscape right under the S-Bahn arches. He and also one floor, it feels like you going into a mouth of a clown or some stuff. That's just like feel, it's feel crazy. Definitely need to check it out. Carta Blau is definitely a recommendation, but it not Oh, it's not open every weekend, I think. Here, people can listen sure. to techno and house music from both yeah. well-known and lesser-known DGs and artists. You can also hang out in the large outdoor space next to the Cater Blau, even when the club isn't open. Yeah. There are also theater performances here, among other things. The right next door, Holzmark 25, is an art and culture village that is always worth a visit. Number one, Sisyphos. <laughs> I knew it that he put Sisyphus on the one. And Sisyphus is on the three and Berghain is on the one. This is the right order for me. It's basically also the order I think uh, that you can take as a guideline for how you can ex and Go to Sisyphus, go there for a while, then go to Katablau, because Katablau usually is also like the after party place for Berghain people sometimes, or back in the days used to be. And then you can go Berghain, it's the final boss, okay? But Sisyphus, yeah, oh, it's also one of the first clubs uh, where I went to. Watergate was the first and Sisyphus was the second. I had like a pretty long Sisyphus phase. One of the OG clubs still doesn't have social media still does parties Friday to uh, Friday to Monday and I think they're close they have a, like a closing season I think they close for three months or something in the winterish times I think but still it's an amazing place but nowadays I can't go there I don't know I don't I just I just don't dig the music anymore you know but it's always has a place in my heart at Hopstrasse 15 in Rummelsburg where there used to be a dog biscuit factory the people who make Sisyphos have dog made their biscuits. own party paradise with their club once you get through the long line to get in, the old industrial ruin is the perfect place to enjoy the nightlife. The large outdoor space makes you feel like you're at a festival. Here, especially- Yeah, Sisyphus is basically the only club where you feel like you are actually on a festival, but in the city, in the club area. It's just crazy. In the summer, you can dance to electronic dance music with your feet in the sand while looking up at the Berlin night sky. There are a lot of small huts. But I don't think the the this outdoor uh, outdoor flow with the sand outside uh, is open at night because obviously you can play loud music uh, next to residential buildings and there are some residential buildings. So I think the the outdoor outside floor is just open at in the morning hours or midday. Couches and viewing platforms where you can rest and recover from the exhausting party. Car body. Also, I have to say, first time actually in Berlin that I see somebody having like a serious sleep in the club. I'm just chilling there, you know, 6 a.m. It's already morning, you know, summer, smoking your cigarettes, you know, just chill, sitting sitting with your friends. And there is a guy just coming with a with a bag, eh? open up the bag, putting out like a like a hammock. A hammock. 
putting out this shit basically. Same colors, obviously, because we are the civils, hippie. Okay, putting it out and just went sleeping. And he slept there. And I think, like, I stayed like another three, four hours in this club at that point. And he was just sleeping there outside. This was one thing that just blew my mind that just people just like sleeping there, just overnighting basically there. You can say what you want, but this is something that li literally culture shocked me in my own city. But yeah, this was also funny. Also, honorable mention is like obviously Griezmüller of this like oh, an old clothes club. Also, a cultural shock that I had. Okay, so I'm coming there on Sunday, 10 a.m. or something. It was like these times where you go to. No, not Sunday. No, it was not Sunday 10 a.m. It was Sunday 10 p.m. Okay, club was pretty, pretty empty by that time. But still, there was like a party going on. I don't know if it even was profitable. That was, but that was the beauty of Berlin, <laughs> or is the beauty of Berlin back in the days, so at least. So, and somebody just, you know, brushing his teeth, teeth there, you know, just doing some, uh, some, some hygiene stuff. And I was just like, okay, man, how long are you here that you need to brush your teeth, man, man? Because he. Okay, he looked like he was long, stayed long there, okay? At least 48 hours, okay? So, and I asked him and he did, so it was pretty interesting stuff that you can see maybe as an outsider when you get into the scene, into the clubbing, clubbing spaces here. These that have been turned into wooden figures and made with love and skill create a unique atmosphere. On the two covered dance floors, underground DJs and big names from the international scene play electro beats, minimal, but I wouldn't say there are big names in Sisyphus lineups. Sisyphus lineups are never announced. You never know who's playing there. And they just have it. They have, man, they all, the only parties they do is Friday to Monday. I think they have like 300 DJs playing there a weekend or 100 DJs playing there a weekend. And I also know that they don't pay a lot, but they just paying like basically like really underground DJs, you know. I think the biggest DJs that they book there have have like thirty thousand maybe followers or stuff stuff. So really not big DJs. But I think this is the art. This is like feel feels like still like real Berlin there, you know. Oh, house from the and techno. Side. If you want to sleep in your own not bed, not too much posturing up. Just straight up music. Come here, enjoy together. Basically perfect. Between Friday night and Monday morning, all you have to do is get a stamp when you leave and another when you return. Sisyphos is the best club in this list because it has a party scene that is unlike any other. That's it for today. I think uh, Berkheim is uh, unlike other and Sisyphos as well. Yeah, so this is, this is it. I would say, yeah, we need to change Sisyphus with background on this tier list. Otherwise, I'm pretty okay. Prince Charles doesn't belong here, obviously. Do we have some honorable mentions that I would add to this list instead of Prince Charles? Maybe Golden Gate. Golden Gate is used to be, I'm not sure if it's open, it's doors, but it's still one of an OG club spaces. Basically, that's it. I think just Golden Gate instead of Prince Charles, because Prince Charles doesn't really belong into this list. That's it for today's video. I re We did like a small reaction to this top 10 best clubs in Berlin. I hope my opinion will added some added something to this video, because yeah, I think I know better than him, because it's obviously, I think, an AI generated video. Still, it was, fun it's, uh, it was funny to hear some opinions, and also to say my opinion about these clubs. Let's read some comments. I am from Berlin. Your list very good, I must say. No bullshit clubs, just real shit. Some really good underground clubs you missed, but it's okay. List is still very good. Yeah. Watergate and... Oh my god! Tresor! Okay, let's kick fucking Prince Charles and put Tresor into it, man. This is like one of the OG, OG, OGs. Tresor is just basically where Techno is born in Berlin, man. Also don't like this club to go there, but you have to give credit where credit is needed, man. Because this club is just insane in the heritage that it, uh, that it gave to Berlin, you know. Yeah, okay, so basically, yeah, Tresor, Tresor has to be on this list and it's like a big uh, faux pas that he did that he didn't you know didn't mention that but prince charles and Ritter Butzke, Ritter Butzke, jesus christ these clubs need to be kicked out weg weg jesus christ uh yeah it doesn't belong to berlin in my eyes <laughs> i'm really hating on this club but yeah it's it's just true man i i no 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 not in my tier list so anyway this is it this was the reaction to the top 10 best clubs. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, write in the comments what's your favorite club. Just let's say write your top three Berlin clubs in the comments if you're from Berlin or you've been to Berlin. And if you didn't have the experience to visit Berlin, write the top 
three clubs or like the best club in your city just write the best club because I, I th obviously i think like berlin is pretty spoiled with the clubs so maybe in the, every major city or whatever has like three top top three clubs so just write the best club in your local city that would be interesting a lot maybe i can find something and also react to it or have a dive in, into it so yeah that's it so leave a like leave a comment and yeah turn on the notification button and see you in the next video bye bye Thank you.